Enterprise Information Architecture, Part Two, by Center for E-Commerce Infrastructure Development. In the last episode, we have discussed what an enterprise information architecture is. Now, let's have an overview of how an EIA is built by examining its process and the people involved. Finally, we will conclude with some key success factors. Here is the EIA process flow. In the beginning, business information is scattered bits and pieces in the enterprise. They have to be analyzed and decided to become the enterprise information model. As you can see, EIM is just like an inventory of basic building blocks, which represent reusable information components. Using a systematic methodology, we can assemble these components to construct a larger piece of message or document, just like building the puzzle or constructing the house. Let's examine the EIA process one by one. In business analysis, it involves the process and information analysis to identify the documents, information entities, and their relationship from the existing or the newly proposed business processes. These processes are defined in a collection of BP or system documents in the enterprise. Also, we collect user requirements for the actual business information needs. With the tools like UML use case and activity diagrams, we can formally document our analysis for the ease of user sharing and discussion. And when we encounter ambiguity about the process or information, we can conduct user interviews to clarify the common business understanding. Finally, we produce the business document and information inventory, which is a spreadsheet recording what documents and information entities are going to be developed and in what business process they are involved. Using the output of business analysis, we can proceed to the enterprise information model design and development stage. The purpose is to substantiate the details of information entities and their relationship using a systematic methodology to build the EIM components we mentioned before. By methodology, we mean that one does not design the model in a subjective manner. Instead, there are many design rules in our methodology as guidelines like the naming convention of an information component, how these components are grouped together systematically in the data hierarchy, or the data restriction, etc. There are many good references as the input of design idea. For example, one may refer to the Hong Kong Government XML Schema Design and Management Guide as drafted by us for the methodology and components already adopted in many bureaus and departments or there may be other industry standards to guide the design of a particular data domain. During the design and development, we use the modeling spreadsheet and UML class diagrams to denote the details of information entities. If two entities have similar attributes, we have to harmonize their difference to construct a common component. Finally, we produce a set of documentations, including the EIM specification, the mapping notes telling how the attributes are mapped to the technical systems, the code list of allowed data values, and the entities scheme. EIM is the model in business view, while a message is the physical document in the implementation view. We have to refer to the system documents to consider the application restriction. So, besides providing the XML schema of a message, we also produce the implementation instruction document to facilitate the application and system development. For example, we may specify how the data is extracted from the system or the validation rules of data values according to the business logic. After examining the EIA processes, let's introduce what people are involved. In today's enterprise, we have the business analyst to perform the liaison function between the business division and the technical division. In EIA, 
we have another important role called information architect. Information architect is the owner of the whole enterprise information architecture. He has extensive business domains exposure so that he can work with the business analysts to analyze the business requirements and to endorse the information models. Also, he is familiar with the UML, XML and XML schema so that he can serve as the technical lead in the two EIA processes. They are data analysts to assist the information architect to produce the artifacts like the UML diagrams, modeling spreadsheets, schema and documentation. The business analyst has extensive knowledge of business processes in the domain areas. He has to consolidate the requirements and comments from the users and the system owners. Therefore, he should have the diplomatic capability to harmonize the information model to address the different interests of the stakeholders. Most importantly, he has to sign off the deliverables such as the documentations as produced by the information architect to officially endorse the information models. Finally, users are business domain experts or representatives. They provide the requirements of what information is needed and clarify how the information is used and its business understanding. System owners are technical experts. Based on the proposed information model, they comment on the system restriction and the technical feasibility of how the information is stored in different systems. Now we conclude with some key success factors in EIA. The first one is the role of information architect who is assigned as the EIA owner to align the business information needs with the technical systems. Secondly, since the design of EIA is business driven, we need business domain experts to clarify the information understanding and requirements. Also, it is important to design flexible EIM components so that they can be reused in the new message design. Finally, it is a good practice to sign off the deliverables after each EIA process to endorse the information models before they are adopted in the technical system development. You're welcome to discuss with us any question or comment on the enterprise information architecture. Thank you.